Woolly mammoths could be brought back from extinction within two years, the scientists behind a groundbreaking resurrection project have said. World-renowned geneticist Professor George Church and his team at Harvard University have been working for the past two years on recreating the DNA blueprint of the mammoth. They have used DNA from mammoths that were preserved in Arctic permafrost to look for the genes that separated them from elephants, such as those with code for a shaggy coat, big ears and antifreeze blood. By splicing the mammoth genes into the genome of an elephant embryo, the team believe they can recreate a mammoth-elephant hybrid, which would have all the recognizable features of a mammoth. Lab tests have already shown that cells function normally with mammoth and elephant DNA, and the scientists now have ambitious plans to grow a mammoth embryo within an artificial womb rather than recruit a female elephant as a surrogate mother. Since starting the project in 2015, the researchers have increased the number of edits where mammoth DNA has been spliced into the elephant genome from 15 to 45. Professor George Church, who heads the Harvard Woolly Mammoth Revival Team, said, We're working on ways to evaluate the impact of all these edits, and basically trying to establish embryogenesis in the lab. The LIGO, probably due to a combination of climate change and hunting by humans. Their closest living relative is the Asian, not the African, elephant. De-extincting the mammoth has become a realistic prospect because of revolutionary gene editing techniques that allow the precise selection and insertion of DNA from specimens frozen over millennia in Siberian ice. Professor Church helped develop the most widely used technique, known as CRISPR-Cas9, that has transformed genetic engineering since it was first demonstrated in 2012. Derived from a defense system bacteria used to fend off viruses, it allows the cut and paste manipulation of strands of DNA with a precision not seen before. Dr. Eds Westra, senior lecturer at the University of Exeter, said, What George Church is doing in trying to revive particular species I think represents a massive opportunity. One can also use this technology for engineering the DNA of rapidly declining species, or those that are becoming too inbred to increase their chance of survival. I'm not sure if it is something we should be doing now, but it is definitely something that the technology offers. Other experts argue that the technology should be used to save animals that are still alive rather than trying to bring extinct creatures back to life. Dr. Beth Shapiro, author of How to Clone a Mammoth, said scientists would never achieve a creature which was 100% mammoth. Elephants are an endangered species, and what if you could swap out a few genes for mammoth genes, not to bring the mammoth back but to allow them to live in colder climates, she said. Professor Church, a guest speaker at the meeting, said the Mammoth Project had two goals, securing an alternative future for the endangered Asian elephant, and helping to combat global warming. Woolly mammoths could help prevent tundra permafrost from melting, and releasing huge amounts of greenhouse gas into the atmosphere. They keep the tundra from thawing by punching through snow, and allowing cold air to come in, said Professor Church. In the summer they knock down trees and help the grass grow. The scientists intend to engineer elephant skin cells to produce the embryo, or multiple embryos, using cloning techniques. Nuclei from the reprogrammed cells would be placed into elephant egg cells whose own genetic material has been removed. The eggs would then be artificially stimulated to develop into embryos. Referring to the artificial womb, Professor Church said, We hope to do the entire procedure ex vivo. It would be unreasonable to put female reproduction at risk in an endangered species. We're testing the growth of mice ex vivo. There are experiments in the literature from the 1980s but there hasn't been much interest for a while. Today we've got a whole new set of technology and we're taking a fresh look at it. Professor Church predicts that age reversal will become a reality within 10 years, as a result of the new developments in genetic engineering.